These are the quiz corrections for quiz number seven, math four. Um, this was taken on October 30th, 2015. Total amount of points was, um, that says 38. Question number one says solve the proportion. Uh, proportion is two ratios. A ratio is just a fraction, so I have two fractions equal to each other. An easy way of solving proportions is just cross multiplying. When I cross multiply, I'll get 18 times A and 6 times 27. Well, I can break down the factors of 27 to be 9 and 3. The factors of 18 are 9 and 2. Um, also over here, I didn't break down the factors of 6. They're 2 and 3. The reason why I'm doing that is because when I divide by 9 on both sides, I can cancel these 9s. And then I can cancel a pair of 2s, and I'm just left with 3 times 3, which is 9. It is possible to multiply 6 times 27 to extra 4, so that's what, 162? And divide that by 18, you'll still get 9. Um, too much. This is question number 2, multiple choice. It says write a similarity statement for the triangles. Well, I notice I have some missing angles. So if I'm missing some angles there, I'm going to have to use triangle sum theorem. Blank plus blank plus blank equals uh, 180. Well, I'll know that this is 67. After I do triangle sum theorem, they all have a sum of 180. Same thing on this side. Now I can go ahead and do corresponding angles. D corresponds with G. Well, if I look over here, A I crossed off because D is the second letter and G is the third one. Same thing over here for B. D is the third letter <coughs> and G is the second letter, so they don't correspond. D and G correspond for both C and D, so let me go ahead and find another angle. Let's do C and F, they're both 60, so C corresponds with F. Notice how in um, choice D, C does not correspond with F, so my answer is C. Uh, question number three, fill in the blank. In the diagram, triangle ABC is, um, in this case, they gave us congruent. Um, congruence and similarity are um, very closely associated. We'll learn that next chapter. So this is the same that we can have a statement here. The statement tells us, um, in this case, Q corresponds with B. Uh, if I did make a mistake on that, just wait after class and I'll uh, correct it. So I have angle B there. Angle C is the third letter and P is the third letter. So that should be angle P. Now here for question 3C, it says AB. So AB is the first and second letter. It must be RQ. QR would be incorrect. Okay, so you must go in that order. Question number four. Plus button. Um, it tells us they are similar. It's a fact. So I should know a uh, definition of similarity is that uh, angles are congruent and sides are proportional. So I labeled it small over small and big triangles. And I can just set up my proportions. Um, they want me to find the perimeter of XYZ. <clears throat> There's two ways of doing the problem. Well, if I know that XYZ is the bigger triangle, which means that I'm in enlarging it, okay, um, I can just find the perimeter of the smaller triangle and then find the scale factor and just multiply by the scale factor. That's one way of doing the problem. Another way of doing the problem is just finding all the other missing sides of the big triangle. So I uh, located PQ over XY. And the reason why I chose these two is because I actually have measurements to them. Well, if you reduce 5 over 30, you'll get 1 6. My scale factor is 1 6. What does that mean? Well, going from the big to the small, I'm multiplying by 1 6 or dividing by 6. But if I'm going from the small to the big, the scale factor is actually flipped and I'm, the scale factor is actually 6. So how can I use 6 
as a scale factor to get my perimeter. Well, if I find the perimeter of the smaller one, which is how much? 21, then I can just multiply it by 6, and I'll get the scale factor, I mean the perimeter of the larger one, which is 126. Or you could have just taken 6 times 6, that gives you 36 over here on the far right, and then 10 times 6 gives us 60. So uh, that would give us... 90, 90 plus 26 gives me 126. Sorry, right, that was 36. Question number five. Notice how there is no picture, so you should just draw one. Scaling triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So order is important. ABC, DEF. Which statement is false? So when I do a question, I'm going to look for all of them that are true and one of them is false. Notice how when I do a problem, I actually go through every single choice. AB is proportional to BC. What does that mean with the colons? We learned before that's a way of saying a ratio, AB over BC. Now you can just check that by looking at the letters. AB first and second over um, BC and DE over EF. So it's going in the same order there. Same thing over here, AC first and third to DF first and third, BC second and third, EF second and third. Um, this one says triangle ACB, they're really just talking about a vertex of C, that is a, uh, congruent to DFE, so C and F are essentially the same, that's the second letters, uh, that is true, ABC and EDF. This one's talking about basically B, and D. The second letters tell us the vertices. So B and D are not in the same position. Therefore, they're not corresponding. Therefore, it's false. Number four is uh, false. So again, if you're doing your corrections, you shouldn't just circle the right answer. You should write an explanation why it's correct and the other ones are false. That is helpful for you because if I put on similar questions or the same exact question, you know how to do it. Here is my Ken Ken or the Inky worksheet. Uh, remember, you can only use the numbers 1 to 3. And when you're putting in those numbers, let's just say you're just like guessing and you know the numbers can't repeat. Well, just double check your answers. 3 and 1, when you subtract them, they should be 2. Uh, here, a student asks during quiz, <coughs> I see no math operation. And it just has a number and it's just a cage for the box. Well, you just put that number in there. It's a freebie. Uh, two numbers here subtract to be 1. Remember, this is not a negative one, it's subtracting to be one. Three plus two is five, and I don't have it repeating. Uh, that page was worth 18 on the front page. Back page. Determine whether the triangles are similar. So determining means yes or no. Explain your reasoning. That's either angle-angle similarity, SAS similarity, or SSS similarity. Um, the common mistake was not showing me the work. So a lot of students would have done this, okay? If a student got three points out of four, they got yes, they told me the two triangles, which you didn't have to, and you, they told me angle-angle similarity, but on their triangles, they don't have any work to show me that you have two angles that are similar. Because if I look at the picture, I only have 58, that's one pair of angles that are congruent, and the second ones are not. So showing me the work to get your four out of four. Uh, if you wrote the letters in different orders, it's okay as long as they are corresponding. So use triangle sum theorem to make sure you solve for all the angles. Uh, it should be very clear for question number seven. Notice how there's no side lengths. There's no numbers on the outside of the triangle. So I can't use SAS. I can't use SSS. Question number eight. To whether the triangles are similar, explain your reasoning. Okay. Um, again, a lot of students wrote yes. They may even got an SAS similarity, but you took a chance because you don't know if the sides are proportional. Well, how do you know the sides are proportional? They have the same scale factor. How do you find the same? How do you find the scale factor? You do small over big. Label this triangle small. This one big. I'm doing PQ, and its corresponding is ST. I get 8 over 12, and if you divide by 4 in both of those, that means the scale factor is 2 thirds. 
to go from the big to the small is two thirds. If you went from the small to the big, it would take, you flip it, that'd be three over two. Do the same thing on the uh, other side. QR over TU. So that gives me 14 over 21, and if you reduce that, it gives you two thirds. Because they're both two thirds, that means the scale factor is two thirds. Now I can say SAS. SAS. Question number nine. In triangle HKM, J, L, and N are midpoints of the sides. I already know that because they already have marks. So in this problem, they're actually showing to me kind of twice. So if you don't get it, you can just look at the marked up picture. JH is equal to nine. So as soon as you see that information, uh, annotate or mark up your picture, draw it on there. So I see JH is nine, and I have these congruent marks. So if this is 9, then this segment is also 9. HN is 7. I have three hash marks, so write 7 there. And LM is 8, so 8 and 8. Well, this problem is talking about the mid-segment. The mid-segment there has um, a scale factor of 2. So if you look at this, it says, what is the perimeter of JLN? That's a smaller triangle. So if you wrote um, the, the perimeter was 48, I gave you two points out of four because you found the perimeter of the big triangle and you didn't see that they're asking for the smaller triangle. Well, if the bigger triangle has a perimeter of 48, then I can just still use a mid-segment equation. Big is equal two times the small. Well, if the big perimeter is 48 and I'm trying to find the perimeter of the small, I can just divide by two and the perimeter is 24. 24. Remember, if you don't have enough time to copy, I'll be posting it tonight, and you can look at it tonight. Question number 10. Change my size. Tell whether the dilation is reduction or enlargement. So that's the first thing they want me to do. The second thing is then find its scale factor. So if you just told me reduction or enlargement, or in the case the answer is an enlargement, uh, then I gave you two points. If you found the scale factor to be two, then I gave you four out of four. Well, how do you know that? Well, we learned about those marbles, and this is our point here of dilation. And I noticed that when I go out from this uh, center of dilation, I have two letters here. I have P and then P prime. We learned that when you see P, that's the first image, or we call that the pre-image. That's the before. Then after that, it's the second, or we just call that the image. So when you see the prime or the apostrophe, that's the second one. Well, if I'm going from C to then P, and then going to P prime, it's getting bigger. That means enlargement. Well, how do you know what the scale factor is? Well, then you can just do small over big. This is small here is a distance of 5, and then the big is over 10. 5 over 10 is um, 1 half. Now, you can't say from, if it's getting bigger, you don't make things by multiplying by half. You actually multiply by a scale of a factor of 2. Question number 11. Uh, this problem I did in two ways. I have a minute and 20 seconds to describe both of those. This is called a triangle angle bisector. I see the two arcs there, which means I'm going to use an equation of small over big equals small over big. Now, my black and white PDF scan here can't show you that I did highlight, or in class we did, this is one way of doing the problem. If I went from M and 26, and then the small and big of 8 and 12. Now, if you do that, you'll recognize that 8 is smaller than 12, so this is a smaller triangle. It's really a shortcut what you're doing. So, M over 26, small over the big, and then small over the big. Once you cross multiply or reduce here, you'll get uh, 3m time equals 52. If you had the answer and you boxed it 52 over 3, at least it tells me you understand um, that's going to be some kind of number. You can also had, um, uh, use long division. The second way of doing this problem is actually just uh, what we've been doing in class is just separating the two triangles. You have to use corresponding sides, m over 26 and 8 over 12. You can do a ratio of um, the two triangles, and you get 17 and 1 thirds. 
If you set up the proportions correctly, I gave you guys three points. That side was out of 20. Hopefully that was helpful.